cholelithiasis is the topic for uh, this presentation. And cholelithiasis, by definition, is calculi or stones um, in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder is a very important uh, uh, structure, and I'd like to uh, show you a diagram that will uh, explain the anatomy and everything. So here we go. So this is the biliary tree, and the, uh, the liver is part of this uh, structure, anatomy, and it sort of sits kind of like here, if we were to draw it in. And what's important is this network of ducts. And so first here you have the gallbladder, okay? Gallbladder's right here. And the stones will be sitting inside the gallbladder, and that's the definition of cholelithiasis, stones inside this gallbladder. But if you notice, there's all these important ducts that are in the close uh, proximity. Uh, coming out of the liver, you have the right and left hepatic ducts, and they join to, find, to form the common hepatic duct. And then the common hepatic duct and the cystic duct that comes from directly from the gallbladder join to form the common bile duct. And then that common bile duct eventually joins with the pancreatic duct and opens up into the duodenum through the sphincter. So that anatomy is very important to understand uh, what's going on. So now we will go back into the uh, um, explanation and symptoms and all that. So what are the um, risk factors, first of all, for developing uh, cholelithiasis? Why would you get it? Well, there's a great little uh, memory tool, it's called the five F's, and these are the five reasons why somebody uh, is at risk of getting uh, gallstones. And the five are the female, uh, fat, being overweight, fertile, which really means like being pregnant, and then uh, advanced age, so greater than 40, and then uh, flatulent, uh, so somebody who, I guess, is has a lot of bloating and gas and things like that. So these five X, five Fs are important uh, risk factors uh, for uh, developing gallstones. So now let's talk about uh, the symptoms. Now, the classic uh, presentation is something called biliary colic, and what biliary colic really is is right upper quadrant pain, and it can also radiate to the back but what's important is the way it presents it can present suddenly and it can be pretty intense and then it can be steady in its intensity and then eventually it leaves after it subsides this dull ache so that's a very very classic way of uh, describing it but what's important to remember is what sometimes uh, is shown in clinical vignettes is that there's no fever because there's no fever it helps you differentiate between gallstones and inflammation of the gallbladder so what I'd like to do is I'd like to really quickly talk about some of the very commonly associated um, uh, presentations um, or diseases rather so this presentation is about cholelithiasis, but there's really a lot of very similar sounding diseases or uh, pathologies, and it's very important for you to know the difference uh, between all of them. And I'm going to write them all out, and then I'll talk a little bit about them. All right. Now, the, the presentation is about uh, cholelithiasis, which is, by definition, stones in the gallbladder. But what's cholelocystitis? Well, remember, itis, I-T-I-S, stands for inflammation, means inflammation. So cholelocystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder. Cholelocolithiasis, well, the lithiasis is referring to stones. Uh, but uh, when you say cholelocolithiasis, it means stones that are in the biliary tree in particular the common bile duct. Cholangitis 
is inflammation of that biliary tree. And pancreatitis is inflammation of a completely different organ, the pancreas obviously, but it's included in differential diagnoses because of the close proximity. So very important to remember all that. Okay. Now let's get into how do we diagnose this. Somebody comes in with this type of presentation uh, symptoms. Well, the gold standard really is a right upper quadrant ultrasound. And the ultrasound will show these stones in the gallbladder. There's other tests that are most very commonly done, CBC, amylase lipase, but you know they're, they're really just done as part of a routine. They're not really uh, diagnostic because sometimes they can be normal. The CBC is important because if a WBC count is elevated, white blood cell count, which is part of the CBC, it can mean a sign of inflammation. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the treatment. Now the treatment of uh, coleothiasis involves something called a cholecystectomy. Now a cholecystectomy by definition is removal, surgical removal of the gallbladder. There's two ways actually of doing this. There's uh, there's a laparoscopic way and there is a open way. Now the open way is the standard way that was done for years and years and that way is where you make this big uh, hole in the right upper quadrant and then you surgically remove the gallbladder which is pointed by this black arrow. But a more common technique nowadays is the laparoscopic way. And some of you may be familiar with this, but if you're just starting out as a student, you may not have seen one yet. What they do is they insert these uh, tubes, and you know, either three or four, and all they really have to do is make tiny little slits to insert these tubes. And the tubes have a camera, and that allows the surgeon to see on a television the inside, and they literally surgically remove uh, the gallbladder with these tubes. Uh, with uh, They have uh, cutting instruments and they have uh, instruments to even cut up uh, the uh, uh, gallbladder and then suck out the pieces uh, through the tubes. And then all they have to do is just stitch up these tiny little cuts. So that's really the treatment of choice. Now, there's another medication. There's a medication actually that's used and that medication is used to dissolve sometimes the gallstones. And that um, is done uh, for people who may not be able to have surgery. And that medication medication is ursodeoxycholic acid. And then this can dissolve uh, tiny uh, gallstones. And this is also given to people who are morbidly obese who may be at risk of developing gallstones or morbidly obese patients who are losing weight uh, after uh, bariatric surgery who are at risk of developing the gallstones. So now finally I'd like to show some uh, clinical vignettes to close off the presentation. A patient experiences intermittent severe pain in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen especially after fatty meals. Ultrasound demonstrates multiple small opacities in the gallbladder that change with the patient's position. Which of the following is a risk factor for this patient's disorder? Well, this is a question talking about risk factors, and if you remember the five Fs, fat, female, 40, fertile, and flatulent. Um, so let's go through this. 20 years of age, well, let's less than 40 so it's not that male sex well it's not female BMI 45 well that is the fat so it's most likely C and parity is basically a person who's never been pregnant so that's the opposite of fertile and a thin build is the opposite of being overweight so that's a cute little question about the risk factors associated with uh, cholelithiasis now let's go to the next one 48 year old obese woman presents with a six-hour history of moderate pain in the right upper quadrant that began after eating dinner and radiates through to her back. This pain gradually increased before coming, becoming constant over the last few hours. She has had previous episodes of similar pain for which she has not sought medical advice. Her vital signs are normal, 
The pertinent findings on physical exam are tenderness to palpation in the right upper quadrant with no guarding or rebound tenderness. One thing for sure is that the answer choices are very similar. And, and for those of you starting out, you might be a bit discouraged by that. But don't worry, because there's certain things that will uh, pop up in the vignettes that can help you differentiate. Now, one thing that popped up for me immediately was this one. The vital signs are normal. So that means that there's no fever. So if there's no fever, it probably isn't any type of inflammation. So you can cross out B and D. Now you're left with A and C. Now A and C are very similar, I understand. And sometimes the vignette doesn't even give you enough to differentiate. The for A is cholelithiasis, which is stones in the gallbladder, and C is cholelithiasis, which is uh, stones in the biliary tree, in particular the common bile duct. But um, one thing I wanted to talk about is a little bit about some of the other uh, diagnoses to help you differentiate. So cholelithiasis we already talked about, and that's what the answer is to this vignette. But let's talk about the other ones. Cholecystitis, well that's by definition inflammation of the gallbladder and so there will be fever and although this vignette doesn't talk about it there will be leukocytosis which is an elevated white blood cell count so those are some of the factors that can help you differentiate cholidocolithiasis is when you have stones in the biliary tree in the in the bile ducts in particular the common bile duct now that can be uh, associated with jaundice another thing that can happen is the entire biliary tree can become inflamed and that actually has a special uh, triad called Charcot's triad where the person will have pain, right upper quadrant pain, jaundice, and fever. So those are some of the differentiating factors. And then finally, pancreatitis is obviously inflammation of the pancreas, which is a completely separate organ. And uh, that can also present with right upper quadrant pain. It's most likely, though, epigastric pain. And, ep and the epigastric area is more in the center rather than in the right upper quadrant. So the location is a, is a differentiating factor there. And also the amylase lipase levels will be high in pancreatitis.